Precision Measurement for Machinists, a Master Task Multimedia Program. Lesson 5, Analog and Digital Micrometers. In the machine tool industry, measurement requires use of a standard size and the use of accurate measuring instruments. Today, these instruments can be either analog or digital and can be based on either the inch or metric system. There will be four parts to this lesson. In part one, you will learn to identify the features of a micrometer and how different types of micrometers are used. Part two shows how the proper care and use of a micrometer will provide accurate measurements. In part three, you will learn how to read and total micrometer measurements down to ten thousandths of an inch using the vernier scale. And in part four, digital micrometers are introduced. Part one. Identifying the features and types of micrometers. This is a standard vernier micrometer. It is one of the most common tools used for making precision measurements in the machine tool industry. The major parts of the micrometer are the frame, the anvil, the spindle, the sleeve, and the thimble. The anvil is located on this end of the frame of the micrometer. The spindle is located on the opposite side of the frame. The spindle is a high precision screw which is attached to the thimble of the micrometer inside the sleeve. Rotating the thimble moves the spindle in or out. On the frame of the micrometer you'll find a lock. This will lock the thimble and spindle to the sleeve so that the micrometer can be removed from the workpiece and the measurement read. The lock will be either a switch or a ring. The micrometer is marked with a series of lines or graduations that must be read in sequence. The sleeve and thimble of the micrometer are where these graduations may be found. This baseline, indicated by the arrow, measures the distances from zero to one inch. The starting point is the zero mark on the baseline. The distance from the zero line to the first large numbered line or graduation is a distance of one hundred thousandths of an inch. Likewise, the distance from the second numbered line to the third line is also one hundred thousandths. Each of these large lines or graduations is read in hundreds of thousands. Between each of the large numbered spaces are four smaller spaces. Each space measures twenty-five thousandths as you move from the zero to the right. The first small space measures twenty-five thousandths. The second space totals fifty thousandths. The third space marks a distance of seventy-five thousandths, and at the end of the fourth space is the large graduation representing one hundred thousandths. The lines on the thimble divide the thimble into twenty-five spaces. Each space represents one thousandth of an inch. If the baseline is between spaces on the thimble, only the last full space is counted. In this example, do not count this space. Therefore, this scale is displaying a value of twenty-four thousandths. All measurements of a workpiece must be compared to a standard size. You will find the standard size requirements on either a shop print as shown here or on a job layout sheet. When working with metric dimensions, you must use a metric micrometer to make measurements. A metric micrometer works the same way as an inch micrometer. The difference is the unit of measure represented on the sleeve and thimble scales. The graduations on the sleeve below the baseline represent whole millimeters. Each graduation above the baseline represents one half of a millimeter or fifty hundredths. Therefore, each full rotation of the thimble moves the spindle one half millimeter and two full rotations move the spindle exactly one millimeter. The thimble scale is divided into fifty graduations, each one representing one hundredth of a millimeter. There are several different kinds of micrometers and each one was designed with a specific purpose in mind. The OD micrometer is used for measuring the outside dimension of a workpiece feature. For example, it would be used to measure the outside diameter of the cylinder or the width of a block. The ID micrometer measures the inside dimension of a workpiece feature. An example would be to measure the diameter of this board hole. Depth micrometers are used to determine the depth of a feature from a designated surface. For example, a depth micrometer would be used to measure how far a drilled hole penetrates the surface of a workpiece or the depth of a slot cut into a surface. 
A thread micrometer is read the same way as an OD micrometer. The only difference is that the spindle is pointed and the anvil is slotted to fit the shape of a screw thread. Special micrometers are designed to measure features that cannot be measured with typical micrometers or are designed to measure a certain workpiece or feature that is mass produced or requires frequent measurement. For example, the blade micrometer would be used to measure the diameter of a slot cut into this round workpiece. The walls of the slot would prevent an OD micrometer from taking this measurement, but the blades can reach the feature easily. This multi-anvil micrometer is being used to measure the thickness of this cylindrical wall. The rounded anvil makes it possible to achieve a proper fit to the inner diameter of the feature. There are also multi-anvil micrometers which have the ability to use different anvils and spindles depending on the type of feature being measured. Part 2. Use and Care of a Micrometer The micrometer, as well as the workpiece, must be free and clear of all grit and dirt to ensure accurate measurements. To clean the contact surfaces, close the micrometer around a clean piece of paper and find the proper tension. Then gently pull the paper out. This removes any dirt or oil that may have accumulated on the micrometer. Next, inspect the workpiece feature you will be measuring. Use a cloth or rag to clean the workpiece and remove any dirt, chips, or oil. If you need to rapidly open or close the micrometer, grasp it by the frame and roll the thimble along your other hand or forearm as you see here. Using this method for high-speed adjustment helps to prevent damage to the precision screw inside the micrometer. Spinning the micrometer by the thimble will cause damage. Rust may occur if your micrometer is left sitting for a long time. Special lubricants will help to prevent rust. Never use oil-based lubricants or penetrating oil on your micrometer. When not in use, the micrometer should be stored in its case and in the toolbox or tool crib. The micrometer at the top of the screen is a 1-inch micrometer, which measures distances from 0 to 1 inch. The larger 2-inch micrometer measures distances from 1 to 2 inches. Your ability to use the proper tension or feel when fitting the micrometer to a workpiece will ensure a proper measurement. Using the proper feel will prevent damage to the workpiece or to the micrometer. Some micrometers are equipped with friction thimbles. A friction thimble controls the amount of tension that can be applied during a measurement. When the proper tension is reached, the friction thimble slips and continues to turn smoothly, although spindle movement has stopped. Other micrometers may come equipped with a ratchet stop. Using the ratchet stop to rotate the thimble when making a measurement is a quick way to find the proper tension adjustment. When the ratchet stop knob begins to click as you turn it, spindle movement ceases indicating you have reached the proper tension. To check the zeroing of a micrometer, rotate the thimble until the anvil and spindle meet. Use the friction thimble or ratchet stop knob to determine the stopping point so you don't over tighten the micrometer and damage it. If you don't have a friction thimble or a ratchet stop knob, you must be very careful not to over tighten the micrometer. Now check the measurement. All measurements should read zero. The baseline should match up with the zero reading on the thimble and the edge of the thimble should line up perfectly with zero on the sleeve. A reading other than zero with the micrometer fully closed and adjusted to the proper tension indicates that recalibration is necessary. Micrometers can be reset to zero with special tools if they are out of adjustment but should only be calibrated by authorized personnel. Check with your supervisor for your shop's policy. To begin calibration, fit the micrometer to a setting gauge or a pre-measured gauge block. Use the micrometer adjusting wrench to set the micrometer so that the micrometer correctly measures the setting blocks. Always consult a manual for your brand of micrometer and follow proper setting instructions. Now open the micrometer. You'll notice that each complete revolution of the thimble reveals one graduation mark on the sleeve. Since one graduation mark on an inch micrometer equals 25 thousandths, one complete revolution of the thimble moves the spindle 25 thousandths of an inch. Therefore, four revolutions of the thimble move the spindle 100 thousandths of an inch and 40 revolutions move the spindle one full inch. 
On metric micrometers, one thimble revolution also moves one full graduation mark. Since, however, each graduation on the sleeve of a metric micrometer represents one half millimeter, each full thimble rotation moves the spindle one half millimeter or fifty hundredths. When you're ready to make a measurement, hold the micrometer with the frame in the palm of the right hand between the little and third finger. Rotate the thimble with the thumb and forefinger of the right hand. Measuring is done by fitting the anvil and the spindle to the feature that we have selected to measure. Gently rock the workpiece between the anvil and spindle while turning the thimble to find the true diameter of the workpiece. When the proper tension has been reached, the ratchet stop will turn without moving the spindle. If you have difficulty reaching the ratchet stop when using this method of measuring, try holding the micrometer by the frame with one hand and use the other hand to turn the ratchet stop knob. Not all micrometers are equipped with friction thimbles. You will be required to practice with a micrometer without a friction knob to develop a feel for the proper tension. Once the proper tension has been reached, the lock or clamp can be used. Be careful. When finding the proper tension, it is very important not to over tighten the micrometer. This can not only cause damage to the micrometer and compress the workpiece, but will also result in inaccurate measurements. Irregular shapes may require holding the micrometer in a different manner. To fit the micrometer to an irregular shape, hold the frame between the thumb and the first two fingers of the left hand. Turn the thimble with the thumb and forefinger of the right hand. Part 3. Reading and Totaling Micrometer Measurements To measure with the micrometer, there are three basic readings which must be taken and added together. Begin with one whole inch, since we are using a two-inch micrometer. All measurements taken with this micrometer will fall between the range of 1 to 2 inches. You will add all readings taken to 1.000. First, the last large numbered line before the edge of the thimble on the baseline is 4. As you learned earlier, each of these numbered graduations represent a distance of 100 thousandths. Therefore, this reading is written 0 .400. Second, each small space between the large numbered spaces represents a distance of 25 thousandths. The number of complete spaces between the last numbered line and the edge of the thimble is 1. Therefore, we add 0 .025. Third, the last number on the thimble, which crosses the baseline, is 5. This number is written 0 .005. To accurately add these steps, or to make any computations with decimal numbers, Carefully write each number below the next. Keep the numbers in line with each other so that the decimal point will also line up. The measurement taken is 1 inch, 430 thousandths. Be careful when reading the micrometer. Two of the most common errors in measurement occur when reading the number of thousandths lines and the number of 25 thousandths lines. When reading the number of thousandths on a thimble, it can be confusing when determining which graduation mark has just crossed the baseline and which one has not crossed. On this micrometer, the 9 has just crossed the baseline and the 8 has not crossed. This means the measurement would be 8 because if we back off the thimble just a bit and bring it back, we realize the measurement is less than 9. Remember, when using an OD micrometer, you are closing it around a feature, so the measurement reading on the micrometer itself is going to become smaller until the proper tension around the feature is reached. If you are using an ID micrometer, the reading would become larger until the proper tension was reached. If you cannot determine whether or not you have crossed any given 25 thousandths graduation, look at the thimble scale. If the scale is reading in the high range, 20 or above, you have not crossed the graduation mark in question. If the thimble scale is reading in the lower range, anywhere from 0 to 5, you have crossed the 25 thousandths graduation in question. In a previous lesson, you learned that measurements and tolerances may also be noted in distances smaller than 1 thousandth. In the machine tool industry, this standard is called a tenth, meaning 1 tenth of 1 thousandth or 1 ten thousandth of an inch. When you need to measure to tolerances that small, choose a micrometer with a vernier scale on the top of the sleeve. This scale will be marked 0, 1 through 9, and 0. 
The vernier scale will divide each thousandth on the thimble into tenths. To read the micrometer to tenths, use the same three-step method of reading standard micrometers and then add the fourth step. The fourth step will be the addition of the number from the vernier scale. One of the most common errors when measuring with a vernier micrometer is using the value from the thimble scale as the number of tenths instead of using the value from the vernier scale. Begin reading this measurement with 600 thousandths. Note that the reading has been written to four places so that all numbers and decimal points can be kept in line with each other. Since there are two small spaces between the large line and the edge of the thimble, the reading is read 0 .0500 or 50 thousandths. The number on the thimble is 20 or 20 thousandths and is written 0 .0200. In the fourth step, find the line on the thimble that lines up perfectly with the number on the vernier scale. Remember, the number of tenths is found from reading the value on the vernier scale located on the sleeve. The numerical values on the thimble should be ignored when finding the number of tenths. In this case, the 7 lines up exactly with a mark on the thimble. To be sure you have read the vernier correctly, check the two graduations surrounding the 7. They should both be closer to 7 than their corresponding thimble graduations. The number on the vernier scale will be written in tenths. This reading indicates 7 tenths and is written 0 .0007. When adding the four steps, always use four place numbers to the right of the decimal point and maintain the correct location of the decimal point. The measurement taken is 0.6707. To avoid errors in the placement of decimal points and in the location of tenths, it is best to write out each step. Care must be taken when reading measurements to tenths. Always read the thousandths and then the tenths. This measurement is read 670 thousandths and 7 tenths. To find the correct vernier reading, rotate the micrometer toward you and check each line on the vernier as your eye passes directly over it. But be careful. Parallax error can easily result when reading values from a curved surface, such as the sleeve of a micrometer. So it is always a good idea to rotate the micrometer until you find the true vernier reading. Here you see that this thimble graduation does not appear to line up with a vernier line. But when the micrometer is rotated so that the point of view is directly above this part of the vernier, we see that this vernier line and thimble graduation line up exactly. One of the key things to remember is the 10 to 1 rule. This rule states that a measuring instrument must be precise to within one-tenth of the total tolerance called out for the feature. Therefore, since the inch vernier micrometer is precise to one ten-thousandth of an inch, and 10 times one ten-thousandth is one-thousandth, only features with total tolerances greater than one-thousandth called out on the print could be measured with a vernier micrometer. For example, if a feature on a print called out a dimension of 550 thousandths, plus or minus one thousandth, the total tolerance is two thousandths. One tenth of two thousandths is two ten thousandths. Since our inch vernier micrometer is precise to one ten thousandth, it would be an appropriate instrument to use to take this measurement. The reason for the ten to one rule is to ensure repeatability. Repeatability means that when the same feature is measured at different times, the resulting measurement can be repeated. For example, if a feature is measured at 412 thousandths, future readings of the same feature should also result in 412 thousandths, thus repeating the first measurement taken. However, if this measurement is taken with a vernier micrometer, you can read the measurement to the nearest tenth. But if you take multiple readings of the same feature, using the same instrument and adjusting to the same tension, you will notice that the number of tenths varies on virtually every measurement, although the number of thousandths will stay the same. Therefore, on an inch vernier micrometer, measurements taken to the nearest thousandths are repeatable, but trying to take measurements to tenths will not ensure repeatability. For example, this feature measures 858 thousandths and one-tenth the first time we measure it. The second time we measure it, with the same micrometer using the same amount of tension, our result is 858 thousandths, four-tenths. 
And the third time we measure this same feature, the result is 858 thousandths, three tenths. The number of tenths varies every time, so a measurement this precise using this instrument is not repeatable. However, also notice that for each measurement that the number of thousandths is always 858. This measurement is repeatable, and therefore this instrument is appropriate for taking measurements two thousandths. Even though the vernier readings were not used when recording this measurement, they still serve an important purpose. Using our last example, let's say that the print called out a measurement of 858 thousandths plus or minus five tenths for the feature we measured. This means the lower limit for the feature is 857 thousandths and 5 tenths, and the upper limit is 858 thousandths and 5 tenths. The total tolerance would be 1 thousandth, so it would be appropriate to use the vernier micrometer. The vernier is needed to determine the upper and lower limits, but it also helps you to see where in the tolerant zone the size of this feature falls. If we look at our previous measurements, we see that all of the tenths values are slightly above the nominal dimension, so we can conclude that this feature's actual size is probably slightly above the nominal size but within the specified tolerance. When measuring parts with a metric micrometer, the procedure will be similar to using an inch micrometer, however the resulting measurements will look quite different. In order to read the measurement currently displayed on this metric micrometer, you must first determine the number of whole millimeters. Since each graduation mark below the baseline equals one millimeter, and you can see two full graduation marks past five millimeters, the number of whole millimeters is seven. Now you must look at the space between the seven and the edge of the thimble. Since you can see the graduation line between the seven and the eight millimeter marks, you now add 50 hundredths to your measurement. If you're not sure whether or not the half millimeter graduation has been crossed, look at the thimble scale. If the thimble reading is in the high range, the graduation has not been crossed and is not counted. But if the thimble reading is in the low range, the graduation has been crossed and is added to the measurement. Now look at the graduation marks on the thimble. There are 50 equal spaces on the thimble, each one representing one hundredth of a millimeter. Since 31 is the last full graduation mark to cross the baseline, you add 31 hundredths to the measurement. With all the information gathered and written down, it is now time to add the pieces together to obtain an accurate measurement. The measurement is read 7 millimeters, 81 hundredths, or 7 millimeters, 810 microns. Some metric micrometers will have a vernier scale, so it is possible to read measurements to thousands of a millimeter. Read these micrometers the same way you would an inch micrometer, but remember that the metric vernier value represents the thousandths place and not the ten thousandths place. For example, look at this metric vernier micrometer. First, note the graduations on the sleeve of the micrometer. Graduation marks above the baseline indicate whole millimeters and graduation marks below the baseline indicate half millimeters. In order to read this micrometer, Count the number of whole millimeters displayed. In this case, the number of whole millimeters is five. Now determine if the half millimeter graduation on the baseline is visible. Since we can see the half millimeter graduation, add one half millimeter, or five hundred thousandths, to the measurement. Next, look at the thimble scale. The last graduation to cross the baseline is twenty-one, representing twenty-one hundredths, or two hundred and ten thousandths. To determine the number of thousandths, rotate the micrometer and find the line on the vernier that lines up exactly with the graduation mark on the thimble, but be careful to avoid parallax error. In this example, the line on the vernier that lines up with the thimble graduation is three, indicating three thousandths of a millimeter. So using the standard rules of addition and keeping the decimal point in place, we can see that the total reading currently displayed by this micrometer is five millimeters seven hundred thirteen thousandths or five millimeters seven hundred and thirteen microns. Part four digital micrometers. Digital micrometers make the job of obtaining accurate measurements of workpiece features much quicker. The primary advantages of digital micrometers are reading ease and error reduction. 
The digital micrometer has a window that displays the total micrometer reading thus eliminating several steps of writing down and adding the reading from different scales of the micrometer. There are two types of digital micrometers, mechanical digital micrometers and electronic digital micrometers. Mechanical digital micrometers display measurements in much the same way a car odometer displays mileage. There are several wheels in the window, each numbered 0 through 9, that display the measurement digitally. In this example, we'll be looking at a metric mechanical digital micrometer. The measurement is taken the same way as any other OD micrometer, reading the result is the only difference. This is a 0 to 25 millimeter micrometer. Therefore, it can measure features no larger than 25 millimeters. Notice in the window that there are four numbered wheels and a decimal point between the second and third wheels. The first wheel represents the number of tens of millimeters, and the second wheel represents the number of whole millimeters. The first wheel to the right of the decimal represents tenths of millimeters, and the wheel on the far right represents hundredths of millimeters. The measurement displayed is eight millimeters, six hundredths. This micrometer is equipped with a vernier on the sleeve so it can take measurements to the nearest thousandth of a millimeter. In this case, the 6 on the vernier is the number that lines up exactly with a graduation on the thimble. Therefore, the measurement would be 8 millimeters, 66 thousandths, or 8 millimeters, 66 microns. Few mechanical digital micrometers are in use today, mainly because of the development of electronic digital micrometers. These micrometers have an LCD display and are typically powered by a battery. Most of them can also display measurements in either inches or millimeters and can be a useful tool in converting measurements from one system to the other. For example, if you have an inch measurement reading of 504 thousandths and 6 tenths and need to know its metric equivalent, simply press the inch millimeter button and the micrometer will display the metric equivalent of 12 millimeters, 817 thousandths. Another feature of many electronic digital micrometers is the ability to zero the micrometer at any position. If you are measuring many identical workpiece features, you can set the micrometer to zero at the exact measurement the feature should be and then determine how much larger or smaller each actual workpiece is. This would require you to work with sign numbers. Measurements larger than the nominal value will be positive and measurements smaller than the nominal value will be negative. Pressing the origin button will reset the micrometer so that the zero reading is true zero. Pressing the hold button allows you to store a reading in the display. Some electronic digital micrometers may have the ability to output measurements to data collection devices such as a personal computer, allowing measurements to be stored for later analysis. This completes your training on measuring with micrometers. See your instructor regarding your next step.